Well, I think it's safe to say, due to RFK Jr., 2024 will certainly be a different type of U.S. election. We haven't seen an independent generate this much of the vote in terms of the polling since 1992. And you can see, if you take everyone else out, Jill Stein, RFK Jr., and Cornell West, you could see Trump versus Biden, Trump sitting plus one. There's been some ebbs and flows. Biden has tightened it a little bit, but this would still be a very good result if we were going into election night in terms of the polls based on prior history and how the general election polls have treated Trump. If he went into election night plus one, the context of that would be he'd probably have about an 80 to a 90% chance to win based off of the fact that if he wins, he probably won't win the popular vote anyway. If he wins the popular vote, he's virtually guaranteed to win the election, and that's based off of the Democrats running up big vote numbers in high population centers in major cities and states. We already know they're going to win, like New York City, like San Francisco, L.A., places like that. So this would be a good result for Trump. Obviously, Biden has kind of tightened it a little bit, but still, that's good plus one. But understand when you include RFK Jr. getting around 10% of the vote, looking up, looking at all the polls, Trump expands his lead by about an extra point and a half. Now, we're going to have to see how this develops over the next few months, but we've seen kind of Biden tighten it up in terms of just Trump v. Biden. You bring in RFK Jr., and it's still a very nice two and a half point lead for Donald Trump. And all the recent polls coming out are showing that Trump, even Quinnipiac, the far you know, very liberal pollster coming out and admitting when you include RFK Jr. taking, look, 13% of the vote, according to that poll that was done just about six days ago, Trump is up by one. That's a liberal pollster doing a general election popular vote poll with a Republican up. It's pretty crazy. RFK Jr., you know, with him announcing his VP, a liberal woman, It's looking very nice, and now you're going to see, and this is an interesting dynamic that I really wanted to cover, Tim Scott coming out saying, no doubt, RFK Jr. on ballot would bleed votes for the Democrats. So think about the argument and the dynamic and the potential hypocrisy behind this entire thing with RFK Jr. possibly not being allowed on some of these ballots, and you're going to start seeing this more and more with his choice of a running mate. The Democrats are starting to feel threatened. They feel like he might take votes away from Biden, and the polls suggest that. So you're going to start seeing the Democrats in a lot of these swing states, like in Nevada, like in Arizona, like Georgia, they're going to come out and say, no, he should not be on the ballot. Obviously, it doesn't matter if he's on the ballot in Hawaii or Alaska or New York or Washington State or D.C. for that matter, but when it comes to the swing states, you're going to start seeing more and more of this type of stuff where Democrats are fighting to possibly keep him off the ballot. And think about the hypocrisy. The Democrats' main talking point when it comes to the 2024 election is saving democracy. Meanwhile, they might try and prevent RFK Jr. from even being able to be elected. And if you want to look past all of it, I do understand the idea Obviously, there's no chance RFK has of winning this election. Let's just call it what it is. I do think maybe in 2028 or 2032, an independent, if we can kind of change the way we think, possibly could have a chance. But right now, where we're at in 2024, people are still hardline Republican, hardline Democrat. And the Democrats are obviously looking at this and saying, this is ridiculous. RFK Jr. has zero chance of winning. He's just leeching votes off of Biden, which is going to cause Trump to get elected. Let's ban him from the ballots or at least try and remove him. I understand their line of thinking, but you can't turn around and say we're trying to save democracy. You know, that's why we can't have Trump be elected, but then go ahead and try and ban RFK Jr. from some of these ballots in very important swing states. It's interesting hypocrisy to follow. And if these polls continue to get, imagine the polls get even more ridiculous to where maybe if it's just a Trump-Biden matchup, Biden starts leading in some of them. But if you bring in RFK Jr., Jill Stein and all the others, Trump maybe is still up by two or three. They're going to get so angry and I think they will push and do whatever they can to try and get RFK Jr. off of some of these ballots 
whether or not he'll be able to be in the debates. I would say preferably no. You would just want Biden and Trump. RFK Jr. being in the debates might help Biden because he might be able to hide a little bit more and not talk as much. We know it's a Biden-Trump matchup. It's nothing against RFK Jr. I like him. I like the idea of an ind independent uh, being president at some point. It's just not going to happen right now. There's no way. And, you know, so many Americans are entrenched liberal or conservative. It's understandable that RFK Jr. probably should not be in the debate because he just doesn't have a chance to win outside of crazy scandals coming out about both Biden and Trump. So the RFK Jr. dynamic right now is really helping Trump, and I just want people to understand this is going to be a different election. We have not had an independent really generate this much interest since 1992, and it will change things at least a little bit, and I do think we need to start looking more so rather than just the head-to-head -head buying Trump, because that's normally what I look at, also in include RFK Jr., because more than likely RFK Jr. is going to be on the ballot in most of these states. It just depends how much will the Democrats try and fight it because it is becoming more and more clear that RFK Jr. is hurting the Democrats. His VP choice based on all the polling, even if you look at the state by state polls, if you're just doing a Biden Trump, to be honest with you, Trump is still up in, in basically every swing state. But if you include RFK Jr., Trump's lead expands even more. And so the Democrats are seeing Biden semi-tighten some of these polls. It's not really anything crazy. Trump's still very likely to win at this point. At least the polls suggest that. But if you're talking about including RFK Jr. and the other candidates, Trump's lead is basically insurmountable. If we were going into election night, like if election night was tomorrow... I would feel extremely confident in a Trump victory, especially with the polls, you know, when you include RFK Jr. and in all the swing states. I think Trump would be over 300 electoral votes if that happened. Ramaswamy against any Democratic effort to keep RFK Jr. off the ballot. It's not surprising to see that. Uh, you know, that's what Tim Scott was saying. RFK Jr. very likely to help the Republicans because he's going to bleed votes from the Democrats. As for Jill Stein, I think it's pretty much a non-factor. I know in 2016, you know, they had to blame someone for the reason Trump got elected. They blamed her. Cornell West is going to hurt Biden. There's no doubt about it. You know, any of that vote was either from a person that wasn't going to vote in the election and just wanted to vote for someone so they'll vote for Cornell West, or it's going to come from a Democrat who's angry at Biden, I think. It's like there's no Republican that's going to vote for Cornell West, let's be honest, that's angry at Trump. It's just there's no demographic there, so West is going to hurt Biden. Stein, I think, is kind of maybe slightly hurts Biden, and it seems like Kennedy based off of his VP choice, based off of the polls, is going to hurt Biden more than Trump. Now, you could say, well, that's because Republicans are so bullheaded. Trump has this cult-like base. But we have to understand the Democrats have the exact same thing. I just think it's gotten to the point where the whole charade and the whole idea of Biden lasting four more years is such a ridiculous proposition. Americans are sitting there saying, that you know, how dumb do you think we are? Th this guy can barely function. What do you mean we're going to elect him for four more years? There's no way. So then what happens? Kamala Harris, who's also extremely disliked and nobody trusts her to lead, lead the country, she's going to come in. It's all just so stupid. You know, but this is kind of how they're pigeonholed. You either go with Biden or Harris. Obviously, if I was a Democrat, I would say, all right, let's just go with Biden. At least he's got the incumbent advantage. Kamala would be even more unlikable. And the Democrats even rejected Kamala in the 2020 primaries. Uh so I think the dynamic right now between some of these people maybe wanting to vote for RFK Jr. over Biden is just the idea of how old Biden is at this point and the ridiculousness of, of him saying, I can serve four more years, I'll be fine. At this point, it, it seems completely absurd. And you compare him to Trump and you say, well, Trump's old. Yeah, but you need to put context to that. If, if you look at Trump's cognitive ability versus Biden, it is completely night and day. And that's why I've said, look, let's just keep everything transparent. Why don't we give both Trump and Biden an IQ test and we'll have it filmed and everything and we'll see who is more up for the job. I don't think Biden really wants to do that. Doesn't really surprise me based on 
what he's sh- and, and, and when is the last time Biden's done a press conference? I mean, it's sad. He can't do press conferences because he'll mess up 15 different things. And when he does do a press conference, he always cuts it short because uh, he's just not fit for the job. It's very obvious. And I think a lot of independents can see that. Maybe independents who possibly were slight Democrat leans are now more inclined to vote for RFK Jr. because at least RFK Jr. is an independent vessel that will get 10 to 15% of the vote possibly rather than where we were in 2016 and 2020, where there really was no independent choice. You know, this is a campaign that's being funded well, and again, there is actually an independent candidate that is going to get some of the vote that's going to shake up the election a little bit, and I'm sure Democrats are going to fight to keep him off the ballot. Remember, they're fighting for democracy, but they want to keep the third biggest candidate in this election off the ballot. From a political sense, I understand what they're saying. RFK Jr. is not going to win, and it's going to hurt them, possibly defeating Trump. But then you can't argue your pro-democracy by trying to keep people off ballots and saying, oh, we're trying to save the democracy when you're trying to keep someone from being able to run in many of the important swing states, which is what I would assume is going to happen. But right now, this is a very different time and a different election when it comes to 2024 with the independent component in RFK Jr. Either way, guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.